What's good everybody and welcome back to my channel Smoking and Grilling with me, A.V. And you can see I'm with my boy right here. Big Mike with hey. BZ Cooks. <laughs> hey, he keeps saying Big Mike. I'm going to tell you right now, this is Mad Dog from BZ Cooks. That's the name I've been knowing him for all these years. So listen, go by, check out his channel and make sure you say what it do, Mad Dog. Hey, with that being said, listen, you read the title, right? So you know we're going to do a spatchcock chicken. Now listen, I'm going to let Mike explain to you guys what the benefits are of doing a spatchcock chicken. And if you look behind us right here, we're going to be using my Lone Star Vertical, you know, grill. Listen, you can call it a stick burner or whatever. This is going to be the representation, right, of whether you're going to do it on something like this or you're going to do it on a, like a kettle grill or anything that you use charcoal on or whatever. Listen, the spatchcock is the way to go. I'm not gonna over talk it. I'm gonna let Mad Dog over talk it. And we... over -talk it. <laughs> right, right, right. So the biggest thing <laughs> spatchcock, and many of you may not have even heard. What the hell is a spatchcock? Spatchcock is a term for like butterfly in the chicken. So I know you've seen videos where the chicken's like flat out like this. That is called spatchcock. It's just a technical term. All right, so the first thing we gotta do is we gotta get this puppy up to 10. Add on to that, listen, it's about multitasking. This way you're not out here, you know, like beating yourself up, chasing your tail, right? So listen, right now you come outside, you wanna get your smoker or whatever you're using, you wanna start getting that up to temp, then you prep your meat, and then when that's up to temp, right about the same time, it's almost like preheating in the oven. Once everything is up to temp, your meat is ready, you put it on, and then now you cook it. All right, so let's get the fire going. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start off by showing you the fire, right? Now, I'm gonna show you Okay, so what you see is right now, I got two, I get, we just call them like two splits, right? It's just split in half. This is a more denser wood, right? So this is like heavy wood. So we put it here and we put it here. Now this paper you see right here, this is courtesy of Mad Dog. Cause listen, it's something I never thought about. And he said, listen, if we save our butcher paper that we wrap our briskets in, listen, it's soaked. When you like this, it burns longer, gives you a good heat and it'll help with the rest. Now. Since we got the heavy wood, now we're going to build a bridge right here on the top. So I push this back just a little bit. He's going to give me some, uh, what he's doing is checking the weight of the wood. You want to find something that is not as dense, right? So, so what I'm doing is I'm building it this way. And listen, this is just what I've learned, you know, from like experience. So you guys see, we got the heavy down on the bottom as our base. We went with a lighter, dent, lighter wood in the middle. To and catch, then, cause that's gonna catch. right, this is what, this is almost going to serve like kindling. And then we got the heavier on top. Now we got this going. We got our butcher paper here. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a light. And that's all it takes. It's going, it's getting ready to do its thing. And then what we wanna do is bring it up to temp. And like you said, we wanna bring it up to temp quick. And I don't know about y'all, but it's something therapeutic about, you know, watching a good fire. Okay, so look, you just saw us, you know, go ahead and start the fire, right? So what I'm gonna do is, listen, you wanna put it breast side down. We're gonna work with this backbone right here. You can take your finger and you can, you know, like feel it. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just take this knife and I'm just gonna score it on that side. This is just gonna be my guide. So you got the neck and then you got that backbone, right? So I'm gonna take it here and we're just gonna score it down like that, right? Like that. Now, you wanna get yourself some shears, right? Now these are, I'm gonna be honest with you, these right here are gardening shears. But listen, they strong and it makes a difference when you're starting to do a turkey. So I just got myself some of these and they dedicated just to food, right? So I'm gonna take it and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just start cutting. Look, it cut through this. It make cutting through this backbone back here just like super easy. I don't know if you guys can hear that over that airplane that's in the background, but this is just how it is. Now listen, because this is like at room temperature, what you want to do is you get yourself another knife and you can just go ahead and clean it up. Now, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Making sure you don't have your finger in the way. You want to go ahead and just chop down like that. Then when we get down there and we pass the bone, I'll just go ahead and cut it. And then we'll clean the rest of this up. But I got a trick to show you. I want you guys to look inside of here and you're going to see this little bone. It's right here, right? You want to take your knife, you want to have a sharp knife, and what I'm going to do is, this is going to help it so when I flip it over, I'm able to push down on it. We're just going to score it like this, and you'll see your knife, if it's sharp, it cuts right down into it. You don't want to cut all the way through, you just want to do it like that. You see how it kind of like opens up, right? So then any little thing that you want to take out of here, like loose, flat, 
skin and all that, you can do that too. So I'm gonna go ahead and just clean some of this up, you know, right now, you know? So then we're gonna flip it over this way. And then remember where we scored it, we just push down right here and it opens it up and it's flat. So got everything cut, it's open. It's gonna cook evenly, right? Listen, I'm gonna go ahead and use my seasoning, right? Let me show you guys right here. Look, I'm using Foyo Chicken by Sweet Smoky Joe. I know you guys see me use that Creole kick all the time, but this is another one of my, my weapons. And I gotta say, listen, his whole complete lineup, hey, you guys gotta try it. I got a four pack that he's uh, putting together. I'm gonna show you guys in my, you know, my future videos. But listen, this is that Foyo Chicken, right? You guys gotta try that. Now, get yourself some olive oil. What you wanna do is just drizzle a little bit on it. Doesn't take much. You just need a little bit like that, right? And then designate it yourself with just one dirty hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my left hand and we are gonna go ahead and just use that just to coat. And we using this right here so that we can, you know, go ahead and so that our uh, seasoning will adhere, you know, to our chicken, that's all. So you wanna get it everywhere. Now, when it comes to seasoning, you know, and I'm gonna do it this way too. Cause listen, we got it open, right? Put a little bit of this in there like this too. You know, we want to get it everywhere. Once we got it everywhere, now I'm gonna take my clean hand. Don't forget, that's that Foyo chicken. You guys been trusting me, you know it. A lot of you guys that went out and got that Creole kick. Look, it's springtime and summertime coming, right? So now you gotta get this. So look, we are gonna go ahead and just start sprinkling. If you watch my brisket video, you'll see that I put it on and I put it on liberally. You know what I mean? Listen, we want to get it everywhere. That's why we use that olive oil. Look, it helps the cooking. Look, and most of all, it keeps that seasoning on here, right? So we just put it on like this. Now, all you do is flip it over and then you repeat. Now, for best results, you wanna like put the seasoning on and let it marinate for at least four hours. So look, I'm coming up close so you guys can just see right here. Look, this is the last one. So this was number five of the spatchcock chickens, right? This was a different uh, seasoning that we use right here. So you'll notice a difference in color, right? So just so you guys can see, and now you can get a more visual, you know, picture in your mind and how like when you cook this, how to cook evenly, right? So instead of it taking a couple hours, this would probably take up like an hour or maybe just a little bit less. So I'm gonna pan back like this. Go ahead, we're gonna open up this cabinet and listen, you guys are gonna be able to see where we've been, you know, putting some in here as we season them, right? So we already got some in here. Look, we put them in a different, you know, placement just to see how it's gonna cook. So we got this one here. That one's already, you know, on. Then we got two up that way. And then right here, we putting this one on right here, right? So we put it on, get it spread out, push it all the way back in the back. I can tell Mad Dog his hands, he think it's made out of brick. Okay, so we got that. Now we want to do is hurry up and close this so that we can get back up to temp. So with us opening it and going in and out of it like that, you guys can see the temp had dropped, right? So right now we at about 200 degrees. That'll get back up to about three, 325. And I'm gonna show you right here. You can go ahead and you can see it kind of like settled in, broke down, but look, the fire is going. So we're gonna go ahead and set that back. And then notice right down here at the bottom before he closes it, look, the vent is wide open. So pull back, close it up just a little bit. Leave it like that. You can see the crack. The vents open. Okay, so check it out. Earlier I told everybody, listen, I was trying to tell everybody this. Listen, when it come to cooking, I don't really cook by time, right? We cook by internal temp. I'm gonna tell you right now, we 30 minutes in, the fire's doing good. I just added one more log. Now I wanna show you this. If you look right here, there's two temperature gauges, right? Now I'm gonna go ahead and open it up, let some heat out, but I wanna show you guys how it's cooking. So you can see, look at the color. Look, put a couple of links on here. You know what, that's for my little G-boy because he would say he wanted to get him a, a, a hot dog. And now you can see they sweating good and all of that. Now don't forget, listen, as much as we looking, that means we ain't cooking. So I'm gonna go ahead and close it. I want you guys to look, I hope you can see it. Maybe by having it in the background, this is what you call clean smoke. That right there is what you want. That's the translucent smoke. And listen, if you get yourself a grill like this from Lone Star, you wanna leave these open. We gonna go ahead and let this continue to cook. I'm gonna probably start checking the temp in about another 15 minutes to see where we at, and then we are gonna go from there. Now, you wanna go ahead and look, take a look at the color right here. You can see that they cooking good. It's not too hot, not too hot. Go ahead and get your meat thermometer. You wanna stick it in and you wanna, 
you know, check it at the thickest part, which would be the breast, because we're looking for 165. And so we saw 132, we put it back in, we waited another 30 minutes, and boom. Oh, yeah. So you guys can see right now, look at the color on it. Oh yeah, nice golden brown. We just checked the temp and just got ready to, you know, go ahead and start, you know, taking everything off. So what you're seeing right there is, look at that right there. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it rest, right? Once we let it rest, then we're gonna go ahead and carve it. So what Mike gonna do is right now, he's gonna take all of the rest of them off. That's it, y'all. Nothing to it but to do it. Barbecue at its finest with smoking and grilling with AB and Big Mike Beasley Cooks. <laughs> <laughs> now, as you can see, look, got it out. You know, everything is like, you know, nice, right? So get yourself a sharp knife and then what you wanna do is just go ahead and I wanna say like carve it, but we are gonna cut it up. You can cut those quarters off of the back. You know what I mean? Then look, I just wanna show you right now, you can just see how moist it is. And this is after it sat for a while, you know, and just like rested, right? But look how juicy, it's tender. Look, it's fall off the bone and you can see that color. Now, if you want one of those dark colors, you know, that, you know, from smoking, you just do it at a lower temperature and you cook it longer. But that right there is that fire. Okay, so look, now all four of them are like, you know, carved up, right? So you guys can see. This is it, you can see the color where it penetrated, you know, down here, oh yeah, this is nice. Then we got another one, another two trays right here. So this, look, this is four spatchcock chickens and two trays. Now it's time to taste it. Hey, Mad Dog, go ahead and, you know, pick one out of there. I'm gonna give me a piece of this breast. Cause listen, this breast meat right here, look at this. Nice, it's moist, look, just it, it just pulls juicy. right apart. You know, it's just super juicy. I'm a leg guy, so I'm gonna give me a leg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're doing yourself a disservice if you don't try this at home. I could probably sit here and eat this whole tray of chicken. <laughs> I don't even know how to really describe it. All I can tell you is, listen, if you're looking for something that takes you over the top with your chicken, this is it. And with these times that we in right now, why not take your, you know, your kitchen experience, bring it outside. Like again, I'm gonna say it doesn't matter if you're on a kettle grill, you're on one of these vertical smokers like this, or whatever you're using, this right here is that fire. Yes, sir. Now, let me know down in the comment section below, have you guys ever even heard about spatchcocking? And if you have, let me know if you've even done it. I'm curious, you know what, I'm gonna try to answer some of these, you know, a lot of these questions, and uh, we go from there. Now, I just wanna say this, keep in mind, flat means a faster cook and an even cook. Now, with that being said, check it out. If you're new to my channel, let me just go ahead and say, hey, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe and tell everybody out there, there's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and taking a mystery out of cooking. And with that being said, I'm gonna leave it up to Mike. How we getting out of here? Peace. Peace.